Hi everyone, it's Chaplain April and I'm just going to do a quick devotion today. I haven't done devotion in a little bit, so um, it's something that I would like to continually do. So we're going to do one today. I have uh, Streams in the Desert. Uh, it, this is a classic devotional. It was first published in 1925 and um, by this lady named L.B. or Mrs. Charles Kalman. Uh, they were missionaries to Japan and China from 1901 to 1917. And uh, then they had to come home because of, because of health reasons and that's when she wrote this devotional, which is really cool. It's a collection of prayerful meditations, Christian writings, and God's written promises. It has become one of the most dearly loved, best-selling devotionals of all time. Filled with insight into the richness of God's provision and the purpose of his plan, this enduring classic has encouraged and inspired generations of Christians. So, I figured we could use this today, and it does have the dates in it, the days of the month, so we're going to do August 16th. And this actually really spoke to me today. Uh, this is something that I really needed to hear. So I'm going to read it and I'll read a few of the verses in different versions of the scripture. And then I'll talk about it a little bit. So we'll start reading. August 16th. This is based on Psalm 40 verse 1 which says, I waited patiently for the Lord. I'm going to read that first of all in the complete Jewish Bible because I was telling you before how beautiful the language is uh, in here and it gets the Jewishness of the scriptures. So Psalm 40 verse one, and this is a Psalm of David, of King David. I waited patiently for Adonai till he turned toward me and heard my cry. He brought me up from the roaring pit, up from the muddy ooze, and set my feet on a rock, making my footing firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will look on in awe and put their trust in Adonai. So this is based on that verse, and we'll just read the rest of it. It says, waiting is much more difficult than walking, for waiting requires patience and patience is a rare virtue. We enjoy knowing that God builds hedges around his people when we look at the hedge from the aspect of protection. But when we see it growing higher and higher till we can no longer see over it, we wonder if we will ever get out of our little sphere of influence and service where we feel trapped. Sometimes it is hard for us to understand why we do not have a larger area of service and it becomes difficult for us to brighten the corner where we are. But God has a purpose in all of his delays. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's Psalm 37, 23. It actually says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Next to this verse in the margin of his Bible, George Muller made this note and the stops too. So not just delays, uh, but also times when, we, when, when things just stop. And that's what requires patience. It is a sad mistake for someone to break through God's hedges. So it's talking about these hedges that God puts around us and that if and that if God is stopping us or delaying us, we won't, don't want to break through that because God's protection is right there. And if we break out of that and the time, you know, when we're, we're breaking out of this time of waiting, then we're kind of breaking out of this protection that he has also. So we want to stay completely obedient in the, um, the timing that God has. There's a time to move, there's a time to stop, there's a time to stay and wait. It is a vital principle of the Lord's guidance for a Christian never to move from the spot where he is sure God has placed him until the pillar of cloud moves. And that pillar of cloud is in Exodus 13:21. Um, it's an old, in the Old Testament. Uh, the, in the Smith's Bible Dictionary, which I have right here, but I also pulled it up online, it, it says, that, uh, The pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night that God caused to pass before the camp of the children of Israel when in the wilderness. The cloud, which became a pillar when the host moved, 
seems to have rested at other times on the tabernacle whence God is said to have come down in the pillar. It preceded the host, apparently resting on the ark which led the way. So God was leading the Israelites um, with this pillar. Um, so it was a cloud and then um, that they would follow by day and then it was fire by night so that they could see it. So when it stopped, they stopped and they knew that's where they're supposed to be. When it moved, they knew they were supposed to move and keep going and, and move forward and it would show them exactly where to go. So and we take that as an example for our lives that um, you know sometimes God has us placed in a certain spot and if we don't have that patience that I've been talking about in uh, the fruits of the spirit study you know patience is a virtue people say it's also you know fruit of the spirit and if we don't have it we're not gonna want to wait we're not gonna want to stay in that spot we're not gonna want to rest maybe God has us resting maybe God has another plan and he's waiting to show us what that plan is maybe it's just an act of obedience that we need to wait so it, it's a really hard thing but we can use this as an example the Israelites would you know when the cloud rested and waited then they would rest and wait so if our spirit is attuned to God then we will know whether he is wanting us to stay and wait to rest or if he's wanting us to move and move on to the next thing one of the ways that we can know that is through confirmation so we pray we ask God for for I usually ask for three confirmations and it's not something that you advertise and you say God will bring you those confirmations whether you speak it out or whether you ask anyone or not it will God will do it God will tell someone to say something to you uh, God will answer a prayer God will do it without you having to conjure anything up um, you will have a confirmation and so if you don't get those confirmations then you know that you can just stay where you're at so let's finish with this once we learn to wait for the Lord's leading in everything we will know the strength that finds its highest point in an even and safe, steady walk many of us are lacking the strength we so desire but God gives complete power for every task he calls us to perform waiting keeping yourself faithful to his leading this is the secret of strength and anything that does not align with obedience to him is a waste of time and energy watch and wait for his leading that really really spoke to me because i have been in a time of watching and waiting and to hear from reading this that um waiting and keeping yourself faithful to his leading is a secret of strength that really really helped me today because I've been in this place of waiting I had some things going in my life that just abruptly stopped it was completely out of my control um, and just another thing that I was trying that wasn't really working the way that I, I thought it should so my advice from my mentor and other people that I know spiritual advice is to just sit and wait until God shows you exactly what the next step is or just keep doing in obedience what you're supposed to be doing right now the things that you know for sure that have been confirmed for you to do right now and that's what I've been doing so I had two different jobs that I was doing I'm not doing them right now I'm not saying that God isn't going to have me do those soon or in the future but for right now, I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and that's these YouTube videos and writing my book. And then after that, maybe God will release me. But it's very difficult because, you know, our society only only praises those that are out doing all the time and busy. And, you know, uh, so it's kind of like, oh, you're not doing anything? Wow, it must be pretty, you know lame or <laughs> what is wrong with you you know we all should be out doing but we're really if you've heard anyone say this before we're not human doings we are human beings so right now I am being you know God put me in a place in my life where I had well, I was able to do that obviously so I'm going to wait for his lead because I don't want to be this person that uh, 
is doing something that does not align with obedience to him and it just wastes my time and energy. I have been that person before. I have been in that spot before where, oh, this sounds great. I'm just going to go and run and do it. And then I find out God wasn't really in it. And now I've just wasted all this time. I've wasted all this energy. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste energy. And I certainly don't want to backtrack. I don't want to have to go back and start over or whatever. So the best thing is to wait. So don't feel guilty and don't feel bad. If that's the place that you feel God has you in right now, it's okay. This is telling us it's okay. Must life be considered a failure for someone compelled to stand still, forced into inaction and required to watch the great roaring tides of life from shore? No, victory is then to be won by standing still and quietly waiting. Yet this is a thousand times harder to do than in the past when you rushed headlong into the busy busyness of life. It required much more courage to stand. It requires much more courage to stand and wait and still not lose heart or lose hope. To submit to the will of God, to give up opportunities for work and leave honors to others, and to be quiet, confident, and rejoicing while the busy multitude goes happily along their way. The greatest life is, Ephesians 6, 13, after you have done everything to stand, stand. And this is exactly where I am in my life right now. I'm having to watch others go out there and succeed and do all these things and I'm sitting here standing still quiet trying to hear what God is telling me right now he's really not saying a whole lot I think he's just expecting me to do those two things that I just said that I know that I'm supposed to do and um, if I go out and I go do all these other things that look good and they are good and and you know can bring success and everything it's gonna keep me from doing these two things that I know for sure that I'm to do so the best thing for me to do even though it looks like you know I'm not being successful and and I'm wishy-washy or something I have to honor what I believe God is asking me to do that's you know his his, uh, his obedience to him is above all else if you ask me so I'm going to do what I feel him asking me to do, not what I feel five or ten other people around me asking me to do that they think they know what I should do in my life, you know, because I could be wasting my time. And we don't have time to waste, right? I mean, I'm 46 years old and um, I have been down that road. I have done those things. I have wasted time. And you know, I really don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to waste time. I want to stick on the path that I that God has for me. And if I if I'm not sure about something, then it's best to just stop and wait. So let's read Ephesians. Oh goodness, I just closed this thing. Okay, Ephesians 6:13. Let's read it in the Amplified Bible. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger, and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. So you do all the crisis demands. You do all that you have to do in order to just stand and wait. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm footed stability the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Pray at all times and every occasion and every season in the spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty to that and keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance interceding on behalf of the saints. So, wow, that is a very, very loaded half of a chapter. Uh, I actually want to use that that chapter for another study because that is the armor of God. And I want to study about the armor of God. I, I would like to write about it also. 
So I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you know, go through each of these verses and do that right now. Um, but I just want to focus on the fact that you're standing, um, you're standing your ground, and you're standing firmly. And if you, if you know, you have the armor of God on, and you are you know, growing spiritually, then it, it's okay to stand and it's okay and, and God is protecting you. That armor of God is kind of like that hedge that's protecting you while you stand because you still are going to have darts from the enemy. You know, you're going to have the naysayers and you're going to have doubts and you're going to have people whispering in your ear, hey, why, why aren't you doing this? You know, I don't, what are you doing? Why are you waiting? What? Well, you know, sometimes we're in a waiting period and I'm, I'm here to tell everyone here that it's okay to be in a waiting period. You don't have to be in a rush. Our uh, society here thinks that the only successful people um, are always in a rush and they're always um, uh, out of time and and busy and you know I don't want to be that person I think you can have success without having it to be in that way um, so God is telling us it's okay to wait um, whenever we know that we are in a waiting period then that's you know all we can do and uh, God is still in it and uh, he's working something in us whether it be you know who knows uh, he could be working one of the fruits of the spirit we could be in a trial or a test or we could be in a in a waiting period to avoid something you just don't know so the best thing is to obey um, whether we understand it or not we're not always going to understand but if we know for sure this is what God is asking us to do then we do it knowing that he knows best and that's all we need to know so I want to encourage you to go ahead and have that period of time where you're you're resting, you're waiting. You want to be for sure. You want to be confident about your next step. And even though our society does not allow us to do that, God it does allow us to do that. And we're not always going to be in a period like that. We're going to have other periods where we're running fast and we're not going to stop. But that is a whole nother thing and that is a whole nother chapter you know so uh, don't think that the waiting chapter is wrong and I'm gonna leave it there that is that's a good little devotion for today August 16 2018 I took this devotion to heart it really really helped me and uh, hopefully, you know, next week we'll do another devotion and we'll do that date and we'll see what God has to say for us on that date. So I'm excited to get back with um, Teaching Tuesdays. It has just been off. Um, school being out and going on all these trips, it was just crazy to even try to keep it um, going on the same day. But hope to get back into schedule soon. I'm sorry to those of you that were waiting and watching for those. Um, they are coming back soon. So you guys take care and know that you are awesome. Know that God loves you and um, he can transform your life uh, if you allow him to. And I will see you soon. I'll see you in the next video.